Welcome everyone that's just joining us. It's going to take us a couple of minutes to, for everyone to populate into the meeting. We have over 300 uh, players are going to listen to our panel tonight. So bear with us, your, your cameras are automatically off, you're on mute. Slightly different from a regular Zoom call, I'm guessing many of you have been doing Zoom calls. This is a webinar, it's a little bit different. I'll explain it entirely when everyone's on, but in the meantime, just sit tight. It takes a few minutes to get everyone onto the meeting. You see some familiar names, a lot of players that are in the PDP program, probably lots of players that would like to get into the PDP program, and maybe some of the information that you hear today will, will, will help will help you on the way. Recognize some coaches as well in here. Probably some proud coaches to some of the players. Some PDP coaches on as well. And again, we'll just we'll just get started in just a second. Um, somebody just raised their hand. Um, you don't need to raise your hand to go to the bathroom, guys, so don't worry about raising your hand. They put it back down. Okay, must have been an accident. Yeah, just be careful not to push that raise hand button. They are polite, David. Yeah, they raise their hand. Very polite. Again, I'm going to wait just a minute or two to do formal introductions because it takes takes a few minutes to get 300 people on online at the same time. Guys, if any of you guys want to go drag, grab a drink of water, you can, because it'll take us about a minute to get started. Alfonso, you just finished the meeting, right? You just finished the call? Yes. You good? Okay. We'll wait just one more minute and then we'll, we'll get started. We want to respect everyone's time. This has been recorded, so those people that maybe show up a few minutes late can, can always go back and, and get the full interview. Okay. Okay, Ian and Paula, I think we're I think we're gonna kick it off. You guys good? Yep. yep. All right. Welcome everyone. Uh, on behalf of NorCal, uh, welcome to our, our second webinar with players. We're building on the back of the successful webinar we had last week with some fantastic alumni girl players, female players. Uh, we now have some faces that you probably recognize, whether it be, you know, just following them on, on, on social media or watching them play live. Uh, we've got uh, four fantastic players. I'm going to allow um, Ian, who's going to host or who's going to conduct the interview to introduce them all. Um, uh, my name is David Robertson. I'm, I'm the moderator, so I'm going to turn my camera off. My job is to make sure the technology is hopefully working out okay, um, monitor your questions and ask them at the appropriate time. Just so everyone's aware, um, everyone's camera is off. Uh, the chat feature um, is not for questions. There is a Q&A tab uh, you'll see at the bottom. Please put your questions in the Q&A. And then at the end or at the right moment, uh, I'll try and we'll try and answer as many questions as we can. So if you want to ask a question, use the Q&A. Maybe, maybe wait a little bit into the interview because they may organically answer some of your questions throughout the interview. But certainly feel free to ask questions and we'll get to as many as we can. Um, again, I, I'm going to be in the background. I'm going to give the opening remarks, first of all, to a program director who's the brains and the drive behind the program. Paolo Bonomo, he's then going to turn it over to our, our, boys head, our, our boys head coach, director of coaching, Ian Mark, who's worked um, with all of these players uh, pretty integrally over the last few years. So, uh, Paolo Bonomo, program director, let's kick us off. Over to you. Thanks, Davide. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank, obviously, David, they put this webinar together and the end in who is the 
the director of scouting and the head coach also of the under 17 state team, in which uh, he has worked hard to con connect those boys. Generally, the boys are very good in some area, but they're not very good in responding. But uh, with the pursue, uh, with the, the hard work we have in here. So thanks, uh, Ian. Um, and also, I want to take this opportunity to thank the panelists here, starting with the, the, the senior one, which is Luis. Luis, I remember when you started in PDP back then, right? You, were, you still yeah. smell like a milk almost as a little you were. Yeah, and was, you, did, yeah. you did now miss one little thing you were all over and and seeing where you you went and how much further you're gonna go uh, is really make uh, make all of us uh, proud and, and is uh, very very good for the program same as alfonso and aiden you know you uh, and matteo who now you speak only Italian, Leo Matteo, he forgot the English. Yeah. So I don't want to take too much time uh, because this is for, for you uh, players. Um, but uh, I want to just spend two words to describe this group that tonight represent the, the PDP. Yes, they were um, good players, very focused the game and soccer was a big part of their life. But for me, I always saw them, uh, which is uh, also equally important, how good of a person they were. They were ambassador on the field and off the field. They were very good kids. So this is obviously credit to the parents that they have, but also credit to, to them because they they stay humble and they always work very hard. So I urge you the, tonight for all of you that are joining this webinar to uh, listen their story, their, uh, what they went through and maybe to your question and the, and the question that Ian will guide the webinar, you know, you find the, the time very valuable and, and learn a few, few tips in here. So enjoy it and thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Paulo. Thanks so much, David, too, for uh, helping to make this happen. And uh, we're excited to, to hear from our panelists here, our alumni. Um, I think Paulo gave a great summary there. I actually had written here on my notes, um, ambassadors and I had underlined it already and uh, and then Paulo just nailed it right there which is which is uh, a great word for these guys um, and I think it's part of the reason why they are in the situation they are now playing at a professional level um, and and uh, we're excited that we're able to hear from them a little bit so um, we're very proud of these players that we have on here um, we have a few other players obviously that we could include in this um, but these were some of the players from our experience with them in PDP over the years, uh, knowing them as people, um, and then knowing what they've now achieved in the game and, and the direction they're heading in the game that uh, we thought it would be great for all of our players and our, our NorCal membership to hear from them a little bit about their experience and about their journey up to this point and kind of what their ambitions are moving forward and kind of where they're headed. Um, just want to start too by saying that we were planning to have uh, Gilbert Fuentes with us as well. Um, he had to have some dental work done and he was hoping to make it, but uh, it was a pretty major deal, I think, and he had to do that today. So we're going to get him on maybe with our state pool in the future and, and interview him at a separate time. But uh, we, uh, we were able to add Hayden Sargis, which we were also planning to have with our state pool. So um let's get started um first of all i think 
we'll just go through with each of you. It doesn't have to be too, uh, too long or elaborate, but um, we'd really like to start off with hearing from each of you about um, kind of where you grew up, you know, what, where are you from? What town did you grow up in? Um, where are you playing now? And then from there, you could tell us a little bit about what those first years looked like uh, as you were getting into PDP. And then from there, I'll, we'll take it a little bit further. So let's start with Mateo. Mateo, can you just tell us a little bit about where you're at now and what team you're playing for uh, currently? And then tell us a little bit about where you, uh, what club you were playing for and where you grew up playing uh, as you were getting into PDP. So yeah, I'm now playing for Fiorentina, um, but I grew up in Scotts Valley and my local team was Santa Cruz Breakers. I played for them for about eight years or until I left this last summer to go to Fiorentina. And um, it was a really good experience, good coaches, good teammates. Um, and, and I went from, from Breakers also, I was able to participate in PDP, IDP, ID2 and I was given exposure to a higher level and more and more good coaching staff. So that was good. Great. And I'll, and I'll go into some, some of those more, de those details a little bit later too. So great. Thank you. Um, Hayden, how about you, Hayden? Hayden yeah, Sarges. I'm currently with uh, Sacramento Republic. Um, I played with their academy for five years. Uh, this year is my first professional year as a, as a professional soccer player. And then as my youth career in club, I played, I kind of bounced around between a Turlock team and East Valley Earthquakes, which was located in the Central Valley. And I played for them around three years. And I was, those were the years when I would join PDP, IDP, the state pool team, and ID2 as well. Right. Okay, great. Hey, you know what? I want to add something here. Mateo, what position were you playing back in those days and what position are you playing now? Yeah, so I was playing um, like an eight, like box to box. And yep. now I still play uh, box to box, but I also play left back. Okay, excellent. Hayden, how about you? I, I was a midfielder and now I'm playing more of a defensive role center back. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Okay, Alfonso, how about you? How, can you tell us a little bit? So, about yourself, um, Alfon Alfonso Ocampo Chavez. <laughs> um, I'm currently playing for uh, Seattle Sounders, and um, I grew up in Merced, California. Um, I played for a club named uh, Merced Athletic Soccer Ac Academy. I played them um, when I was six, and I left to Seattle when I was 13. Um, and then I was in Seattle for like probably three, four years. Well, I'm still there. Um, and I got invited for my first national team when I was 14. Started with PDP when I was 11, 12. Played striker, left wing, right wing, the 10. Um, and yeah. What position now? Still up front or as a winger? Yeah. Or? As, as of right now, with the second team, I play winger. And with the first team, I'm more of the striker. Great. Okay. Uh, Luis, Luis Arriaga. Hey everybody. Um, yeah. So yeah, I currently play for Russell Lake in Utah. Um, I'm from Santa Rosa, California, and I grew up there. And um, well, I played with the Russell Lake Academy before I signed with the first team for about four years, and before that, I played with Santa Rosa United for about five years, which were for the last three years from like age eleven to fourteen is where I was doing PDP. So I started at a young age or 12 to 14 and I usually played either false nine or as a 10 or eight there. So it was pretty good. Yeah. Great. So if we take it a little bit further now, thanks guys. Um, if we take it a little bit further, i curious about, you know, if you can take yourself back to those days when you were, you know, playing at your club, uh, the PDP came up, you know, maybe you were in ODP as well. Um, all of a sudden you were in this uh, environment where we were asking you to compete for a position and, and uh, 
Can you tell us a little bit about your memories of that or, or what that looked like? We can just go in the same order, Mateo, if you don't mind. Yeah, so for me, PDP was, was really fun. It was a good opportunity for me to uh, have another training session every week and to, have the, and to look forward to the PDP play dates, things like that. Um, it was then when I first, first experienced playing at more of a higher level, I'd say, um, with, with more competition for each position, like Ian said. And yeah, for me, it was a very good experience and a good stepping stone to where I'm at now. Great. Hayden, I, re I remember seeing you, Hayden, I think I was in Modesto one time, and I feel like it was just before you got into PDP. And I remember um, you kind of mentioning like, hey, I think those are the PDP coaches. And then I think a year later, you were in the mix, right? But yeah. can you tell us a little bit about that, about your experiences with it? Yeah, for me, it was it was a great opportunity to go and play for PDP. I was looked up to that program, to to how it was being ran, how the opportunity I had within it. So for me, going there, my technical abilities improved drastically. And also, I developed kind of a leadership role back in my club team, kind of bringing what I'm learning there and, and bringing it back to my team so we can get better and compete. Yeah, yeah, I remember that too. Great. Um, and Alfonso, can you tell us a little bit? I mean, you uh, you came in too and uh, started competing pretty pretty quickly to to be involved with some selections as well that were traveling. And and uh, can you tell us a little bit about your memories of that? Yeah. Um. Actually, my favorite trip was probably Mexico. Um. Yep. That, was, that was probably my my best trip. Like. Like the the team bonding of the pairs, like it was just great. Like on and off the field, everyone was respected. We all, when it was time for game time, we all like were focused. We tried to win every game. And I feel like that was probably one of my best trips and one of my best experiences playing against Atlas, Mexico, a lot of them. So yeah, it was good. Yep. Okay, great. And Luis, you uh you you were with us from the beginning, obviously, and all the way through. Um, what are some of your memories for, for PDP and what that environment was like? Yeah. Well, obviously, I thought PDP was a great experience. Um, you know, and when I first started, I also started playing against people who were older than me. So that made my game change um, drastically. Yeah. Um, yeah, it made me think faster. It made me, well, yeah, like play quicker, just make better decisions off the ball. Um, the competitiveness was pretty good because you're always trying to compete for that spot. Um, they drove you to be better and same with you drove them to be better. So it was just a great experience, um, healthy environment, and you just create great bonds with all the players too. And then my favorite trip was probably Mexico as well because we represented ourselves really well and we showed um, the Mexican team that you know, us Americans could play. So it, we just sent them a good statement, I thought. Yep, I would agree. And I wanted to go a little further into that. Um, so it's important, I think, for everyone listening out there that, you know, everyone obviously develops at a different stage in their career, especially in their youth career. And I think all of you have kind of proven that where um, – you know, Alfonso and Luis, you guys were kind of selected early on. Luis, you got into the national teams right away, youth national teams for the U.S. Alfonso, you've now gone to a World Cup. Um, Mateo, you went to um, ID2 as a late developer, right? And you were able to travel to Europe. And I'm happy to say that I've been to Europe with Luis with the national team, and I've been to... Mexico with Luis and Alfonso and I've been to Europe with Mateo with ID2 and um, it was great experiences and then Hayden you joined the DA right kind of as you were starting to peak and and then you weren't eligible for PDP anymore but now you've signed as a professional as well so um, I just wanted to hear a little if, if you guys could say a little bit more Mateo about what that experience was like um, you know making the ID2 uh, going to Europe, of course, and, and you were a late developer. So 
Um, if, could you share a little bit with that? Because we obviously have a lot of players in the PDP that mature a little bit later than others, um, but they're still able to kind of persevere and make it to the next level. So, yeah. So for a little me, bit of growing up, thanks. Yeah. So for me, growing up, I was always a little bit smaller. Um, a lot of people looked at it as like a disadvantage, but for me, I kind of saw it as an advantage because I knew one day I'd grow. Um, it forced me to be more technical, more intelligent with the way I play. And yeah, so then the ID2 Spain was a very good experience. Um, we got to see, and we got to compete with a lot of uh, top tier clubs like Inter, like, um, like Barcelona was there as well. So just, it was very good competition and it was good to compare myself to the level abroad. Yep. Ian, is this a good moment to show show a quick video? Sure. Yeah. So maybe Matteo can talk us through this a little bit. And oh yeah, so this is um, this is a friendly game at practice, and just like little highlights of me playing. Um, I'm the white team. It's kind of tough to see because there's no numbers and the quality's not the best, but. Um, uh, my team's the U17s, and we're scrimmaging the U18s in this game. And, yeah. And, and this is in Italy, just for clarity. This is Fiorentina in Italy, yes? Yeah. Great. Right. So I just got the ball. That's me. Field looks narrow. Yeah, it is. It's very tight. It was a very fast paced game. They look big, too. Yeah, they are. So, those entry passes. So what what are some of the challenges or differences you see now, Matteo? I mean, you're playing in Europe and it's at the highest level in, in Italy. And um, I mean, what are some of the main things? Have there been some surprises of things that have surprised you about the differences or some things that really stand out that you could share? Yeah, so for me, the game over there is um, very tactical, very defensive, which I had to adapt to very quickly. Um, it was kind of a shock going there because of the amount of staff there and just little things that you didn't really think about, like even the locker room, things that I didn't experience younger when I was playing. But... Um, no, it's been a good experience. I was lucky enough to be uh, really, I'm really supported by my team and my, my coaches. So, yeah, I can't complain. Outstanding. Great. Thanks, Mateo. So, Hayden, um, you know, as I mentioned, you're, you're a great example of, it feels like sometimes with uh, ID2 and, and youth national teams and kind of this pathway through the PDP that, some players get so eager and they really want to be there and then they see their friends getting selected and they're not selected and they just have to persevere. And then as soon as you started to really, everything started to click, I felt like then join the DA. So then you couldn't come in to our programs anymore. Um, but here you are signing as a professional. And then I, you know, I just told you this before the call that you didn't know that I was actually assigned, um, to scout your game for U.S. soccer to be um, looked at for the national teams, that this the last game before before we took this break, um, and I think it was your first game, right? Was that your yeah, first it was first game. It was a practice game, first game, and you did outstanding. So, can you share a little bit about that path, a little bit of your perseverance, and um, we'll show this video, and then and then maybe you can you can share a little bit of how that 
how that's gone for you. Yeah, so like you said, I wasn't always picked to go to all the the tournaments or the any of the selections. Oh, sorry, uh, Hayden, we'll show the video first and then you can talk as because this is the moment you sign like I, I've one of the highlights and then you can talk. Oh, okay, sure. Oh, yeah. Let me sorry, let me play the video. Okay. And Ian, do you want to highlight, um, just real quick, Mario, reference Mario in this as well? Oh, yeah. So Mario Panagos is in this as well, who we're going to be interviewing for the state pools. So another former PDP player. I'm here today because I'm signing my first professional contract for the Tech Republic. The academy has basically built me into the player I am today. It's an unbelievable feeling for me to sign a professional contract. It's, it's a player's dream. So for me to do it at 17, it's a fantastic year. It's really important to me because it's where I grew up also. So just being here and growing up here and then now I'm on the team here, it's really cool. We just want to thank you all for coming to Chondo's for a momentous day for the club of Sacramento Republic FC. Today we get to make two young men's dreams of becoming professional soccer players come true. So we bring them up on stage? Yeah. Let's bring them up, ladies and gentlemen, Mario Panagos and Hayden Sargis. It's a great day for our club. It's a great day for soccer in Sacramento, but honestly, huge day for these guys. Congratulations and looking forward to much more from both of you. This is a reason why I came to the football club, um, to see young players like this get the opportunity to play in the first team. So for me, it's a proud, it's a proud moment for them, and it's a huge moment for our football club. Let's sign those contracts, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it up for them. For the first time, we want to welcome Mario Panagos and Hayden Sargis to our Sac Republic FC family. Talk about the future uh, of this club, I think there's no better representation than to see see two, two guys, two young men who from the very beginning have been a part of our academy, have grown, have worked hard, all their families, their support system to get them there. And then to have a day like this with them signing their first professional contracts with their hometown team, and it's hard to put, put that into words just to see the expressions on, on their faces. It's, it's unbelievable. It was fantastic. I mean, it was one of the best moments beside when he was born, my or my daughter born. You know, it's it's a lot of dedication and hard work that he's put in. And All the hard work that we've gone through as a family has really just moved forward. And he's basically taking his dream and going with it. So it's been wonderful. So cool. Yeah, it's outstanding. Yeah. So yeah, Hayden, um, congratulations, by the way. It's really exciting. Um, Thank so you. can you take us through that a little bit? Because I know that's, you know, that's a tough road that uh, a lot of players have to face, right? Where they go through being selected and then not selected. And, 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 and here you are signing a professional contract. So can you take us through that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So like you said, always not having that opportunity to be selected or go to the tournaments, it's obviously frustrating, but to see your friends do it and have success, it gives you more, you get hungrier to, to get to where they're at. And then for me, sign a professional contract, it's a, it's a dream. So for me to get there, there's another goal after that. So the process of, of getting there through the ups and downs is just, like you said, perseverance and, and, just craving the end result so bad, just wanting it. Outstanding. It's great. It's a great lesson for everyone. Good job, man. Um, so, Alfonso, if we go to a little bit of your uh, experience getting through PDP and then um, you were able to travel with us going to, to Mexico as well um, as an 02, right? That was an 01 group. So you were playing a year up with Gilbert Fuentes as well. Um, and now recently you've, you've signed professional contract with Seattle and you've also um, been on the national team for a few years and you were able to play in a World Cup. 
which is uh, outstanding. Uh, what an accomplishment already. Um, so can you kind of take us through that a little bit of what that was like from the, the PDP getting to kind of the point you're at now? Do I say right now or do I say after the video? Um, what do you think, Robo? You want to show the video first? Yeah, I think so. We want to see some goals. We got some goals here to show. Let's see what Alfonso has been up to. Let's do it. <laughs> But bienvenidos to our broadcast as well as Ocampo Chavez gets it wide for Serrano. Serrano able to get to the end line. I think we all thought as soon as it fell to his right foot, he was going to drive it. But no, the fake, he brings it across, gets an extra yard toward the middle. Trust. Leva now steps in and pushes it wide for Ocampo Chavez. It's against River Plate, isn't it? Onto Ocampo Chavez, the number nine, yeah. cuts in on his left foot. Finds a little bit of space, beats another defender. The shot is blocked. They're able to win the ball. Hagar charging forward. Ocampo Chavez with the goalkeeper out. Clips it over. And Seattle goes ahead. Who else was it going to be but Alfonso Ocampo Chavez? Look, it'll be Leva who clips it to the far post. Alive for Seattle. Headed on the far side and in. Serrano looking for space. Gets the crossaway. Alive in the box. Ocampo Chavez. The crossaway, Bobby. Ocampo Chavez just staying focused there in the middle. He picks up his fat head. He finds the slashing Danny Robleck. Corbett puts that ball in the back of the net. And a lot of times you'll see as Seattle here on the break, can they make it four? It's off the hands of Chinadu. Picks up his head, evaluates the situation, even gives the goal. Check was complete on that play. The VAR saw nothing wrong. No review. Floor. It's knocked down on the far post now. Campo Chavez. A second cross floated in Serrano. Seattle Sounders with the goal! Compressing from thrown away for this time. And it's the usual goal for him. Ocampo Chavez picking up his head and ping it back across the goal, out of the reach of the goalkeeper. An inch perfect goal. Outstanding. So, Alfonso, can you take us through a little bit of those, those ID2? And then you said, obviously, the Mexico trip was a, that was a big one. Um, we were able to, to beat Atlas and, and even Chivas there with a great experience. Um, can you take us through a little bit after that of how, how it kind of went and, and uh, going leading up even to the World Cup and then signing as a professional? Yeah, so after the Mexico trip, um, probably two years later, I moved up to Seattle to try out for – I was there for a week with Axel Ramirez from your side yep. also. Yep. Uh, we went up there for a week. We tried out. Um, it was difficult because they were like they knew so much more than what me and Axel knew because we like played club soccer and they were of course a lot less academies. So, um, but we like fought hard and after that I signed with academy. After that I got my first call up right after um, for the national team, the U14 with Dave Vandenberg, and yep. um, that, I think Gilbert was there also. Gilbert. Um, yep. Yeah, and then after that, I just started playing with Academy, um, going to UDAN in England, different types of tournaments, international, Man City Cup in San Diego with, with the Sounders Academy. And I feel like all that, all that experience of traveling around and playing different environments and different styles of play of the teams, I feel like it helped me a lot uh, as a player on and off the field. And also, um, so after that, um, I signed with the second division team when I was 16. When I was 16, I played with them for one full season. After that, I signed with the first team when I was 17. Um, played a season with them. And this was actually going to be my first full season with them, but sadly, the, the virus. Um, but yeah, so far, it's been great for me. Um, been playing against, I, I played a friendly Dortmund. Um, I stepped on the same field as Sancho and all of them, so it was just a great experience. These wow. Yeah. Outstanding. Love it. Okay. Um, yeah, we were really excited, too, with the World Cup, watching you there, Alfonso. That was uh, really exciting. And I have a feeling we're going to be watching all you guys more in the coming years, too. So, Luis, um, you've obviously – you were even at our first – one of our first PDP experiences where we took a group, a selection, a PDP selection outside of Northern California. We went up to Northern Cal uh, to uh, Oregon 
and we played against selections from Oregon and also Washington. Um, and that was one of our first experiences. I think you did that twice even. And, yeah. uh, and all the way through kind of you were involved um, with our programs, even to the point you went to ID2, right? You went, uh, yeah. you went with the national teams and you and I were in Europe with the national teams. We did the Mexico trip, sorry, with PDP as well. Um, and now you've signed as a professional. So, um, you know, you've, you've had quite a, quite a road so far. That's pretty outstanding. Um, and now I know the, the years passed and you, you weren't called with the national team as much either. So I know that's probably, uh, been a challenge for you too. So can you take us through that a little bit though? Like kind of after the PDP experiences and then, and then how that went for you? Yeah. And how, how about we show the video with the national the video team? first? Sorry. I keep forgetting. No, no I'm worries. Excited to hear from hey, well, we're, we're, we're a team here. Hold on. <laughs> Representation of the American people, the national team, the United States of America. Do you have some memories about this game, Luis? Yeah, I believe this is the first game I played against another nation. Yeah, I believe for the national team. Yeah, and it was just a great game overall. Um, yeah, as you can see, like we just scored. Um, I don't really want to spoil the ending though. <laughs> Not yet. Right. And we went back the following year too, right? Is it the next year that we went? Um, is it the same one. Oh. When we played Brazil. Ooh, that, I, no, that was another year, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Is that you, Luis? Uh no, I believe that's Conrad who played with. Oh no, that was Shush. I just shot it right there. It's Conrad De La Fuente. Plays yeah. with uh, Barcelona. You dribbled like you a little bit. That's why. I... <laughs> yeah. A great save. Yeah, and that was Conrad again. Oh, he literally did all the work, and I was just there to tap it in. Nice. Opportunistic. <laughs> yeah. That's nice your first game, first ever game for the national team. Yeah. Taylor Booth, there's John. Marcelo signed professionally now in Houston, I believe. Is that right, Luis? Yeah. 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 Great. So, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about how that went, Luis? So, you. Obviously, started with the national teams at a really young age. Yeah. So you want me to talk about just right? Yeah, after? just how how that how that process went to the point of you actually signing pro. Yeah. Um. Well, after doing all the PDP and stuff, well, Friday too, I was scouted from the Real Salt Lake Academy because they were in Casa Grande at the time, Arizona, and I too had their final camp there before yep. the the overseas or whatever. And yeah, we hit them up um, if they wanted to come scout me and they did. And well, they just liked me. So from going to club to the Ralph Salt Lake Academy was a huge um, step for my career. And it was there, it was a good experience. Um, like I was already on the national team, so I kind of knew what to expect um, of gameplay. But when I first got there, I was also playing against people who were older than me and who were also on the national teams of older age groups. 
So when I got there, it was kind of difficult adapting. Um, but I realized that other people were in the same situation as me where they left their families to go to the academy and we were just all in there as one together. And we just all helped each other go through it um, by bonding outside of soccer or if it was on the field, we just help each other as much as possible. Um, and about three years ago, um, we moved the academy from Arizona to Utah, where the first team and the second team were there, which, I mean, it was good for us because the first team coaches and the second team coaches would just watch us train and we could get called up at times, maybe be rostered for a couple of games, which was pretty good. Um, so I felt that was a big step in my career as well, because that's where they saw me more in action. And I did well at the academy level, um, scoring a bit of goals and a couple of assists. So I just feel like going to Utah, continuing with the RSL Academy helped. I mean, it benefited out well as I signed a professional contract. So it was good. Oh, outstanding. It's uh, such a great journey so far. And I, I know you're going to, you're going to continue. So on that note, um, you know, I think all of you are probably aware of how we uh, evaluate players and it's, it's pretty common across the board um, where we look at what we call T2, T2, P2, and that's your technique and the tactical parts of your game, um, your personality, and also the physical side. So I'm kind of curious, um, Mateo, we'll start with you. If you could share a little bit with what you think some of your strengths were, uh, you know, growing up and then, what are areas now at the level you're at now where you feel like you maybe you still want to improve or areas that um, you might still have your strengths, but now maybe there are other areas where you want to improve. If we just think about the technique and the, the tactical side of the game, your, you know, decision, decision making and, and reading the game and then the personality piece and also the physical piece. So could you share that a little bit with us? Yeah. So growing up, I was, um, I was a good player on the ball, but like I said earlier, I was uh, I was a lot smaller than most of the players on the field. Um, then um, I grew a lot. Now, now I've grown a lot, and I'm able to be more successful because I I still have the technique and the game intelligence and everything that I developed growing up. Yep. I have the body to put behind it. I still need to grow a little bit, but um, I've improved a lot on that note. Um, yeah, but I think growing up, I had to improve defensively. I had to um, also improve as a leader, which is something I think I can still do better now. But um, yeah. yeah, great. Uh, thank you. Hayden, what, what about you? And some areas you felt like have always been strengths for you and then some areas you feel like now at the level you're at where you really want to try to improve? Yeah, so when I was growing up, I was, I was a lot taller than most O2s for my, uh, for my age. But technically, I wasn't, I wasn't there yet. I, I didn't have the abilities I have now. So it, was, it took time for me to grow into that and build now i i think there's a couple of things i need to get better at like my heading i need to uh, it's more of not a, a, a physical side it's a mental side of being patient on the ball and just picking times when to do certain stuff and my strengths i believe i i have a I have a great weak foot and my distribution is one of my uh, big strengths I would agree. How about you, Alfonso? What do you think some of your strengths were coming up to this point? And are there some areas now that you want to try to improve at the level you're at now? So growing up with Merced, they would um, usually just lob it to me and I would just run in behind like from the defenders and just use my pace. So that was probably one of growing up. And But now it's different. Now you have to build out. You have to know when to move and everything. So I'll probably say my biggest strength is speed, dribbling, 
Um, and I'll probably say weak foot also, my weak foot. And to get better at, I think there's always improvement for everything. Um, and I would probably work on my like, finishing more. Okay, great. How about uh, you, Luis? What do you what do you think some of your strengths have always been, and and some things you'd like to improve on now? Yeah, um, since I always played the ten role, it's more of a playmaking role. So I always thought my strength was seeing the play before it even happened. You know, like I knew what was going to happen, or I knew what I was going to do before I even got the ball. Um, the ability to, like I said, playmake was one of my strengths. I thought. Um, I had good pace. I had good shooting. Um, but obviously, I feel like now, to this day, I feel like I could work on my left foot a bit more. Like, I think it's good, but it could always get better. Um, shooting with your weak foot um, could always get better. Like, outside the box, tight corners, anything to help that. Um, then, as a midfielder, also, since now, like, I'm pro, and everybody, or the center backs, the defenders, everybody's faster, um, bigger. So the timing of your runs, I feel like I could get better at. Um, just making those quick decisions can um, create a goal, you know? So yeah. I feel like I could, I could do that better. Outstanding. Okay. Well, I want to wanna have one more here. Um, and then we'll open it up to some questions and, and uh, see if Paulo has something as well or and David, if you want to add anything. But um, so obviously through all of this experience and thanks for sharing so much, guys, um, you guys were able to separate yourselves, um, you know, from the rest of, of some of your, your friends, obviously, and a lot of your teammates um, in order to get to the point you're at now. So I'm just curious about were there things you guys were doing on your own through all those youth years that we've been talking about up to the point you're at now. And then a second part of that question, I would say are, what are your ambitions now, now where you're at right now? Um, do you have ambitions beyond where you're at right now as well? And what are those? So Mateo, can you share, share with us a little bit of that? Yeah. So for me, I've always done a lot of stuff on my own. I've always been doing a lot of technical work a lot of um a lot of juggling like dribbling drills things like this after even my own practices and now i'm starting to do a lot more strength stuff to improve my game but um yeah so future goals i have i eventually want to get called up to the national team and um my main goal down the road uh is to one day get my fiorentina debut Love it. Love it. Okay, great. Hayden, how about you? Yeah, a lot of things. I did a lot of trains by myself, doing a lot of things that you don't really want to do, work on your weaknesses, and watched a lot of players that played in my position. So watching a lot of the game, film, focused on my diet, a lot of little details in that, and uh, – Goals like like I want to get called up to the national team one time and win a championship with Sacramento. All right, love it, Alfonso. How about you? Yeah, so um, yeah, one of my goals probably is um, probably is make it to Europe sooner like later on. Um, as of right now, of course, trying to focus with Seattle. As of right now, things like years, but my, one of my goals is to play in Europe. And also, um, my dad and I, we used to always go to, like, parks, and he used to always, like, cook cones for me, and I used to always dribble, just, and then he would, like, just stand there as a mannequin, and he, and he would want me to go at him, so I would just, like, you know, just use my speed and everything, and just be doing cones. Also, um, I would do fitness runs a lot, like, laps, just run miles and yeah and so one of my goals is probably to stay in europe love it it's a great goal and Luis, how about you um well since i started pdp at a very young age i would train quite a bit quite a lot um yep. at least four or five times a week 
Um, so sometimes I had, or I took that day off because I had to like let my body rest. And that's important um, building as a player as well. But the extra <clears throat> things I would do outside of our team training would be working on, um, like Hayden said, like your weaknesses. But I would do it after our team training because, like I said, having that day off, I guess, um, to let your body heal was vital for me as growing as a player. Um, so, yeah, I just work on my weaknesses after trainings, um, work hard, things you just don't want to do, extra fitness in, but you just got to do what others don't. Right. So that, oh, and my and ambitions. ambitions. My ambition was to be a regular starter for Real Salt Lake. Um, yeah, that's my goal. Love it. Okay, great. So I I have about uh, 50 more questions, but I'm going <laughs> to wait. I think this is r super valuable, and um, I think it's really valuable for our, our PDP players, especially to hear from all of you. You've gone through the experience. Um, we we always tell our, our PDP players that, you know, everyone's developing at different times, but we're, we're always looking at a group where we know there'll be one or two professional players that get through and and now you guys are obviously in in a similar position because now you have to still fight for a spot and and you know and still set goals and and continue to train and know what your strengths are and work on your weaknesses but uh you know i, I know i'll get another chance but i just want to thank you guys for all your your uh, ian they're not they're not getting off ian they're not getting off that easy because we've got a lot I know. of questions I know, got a lot I know. Questions. go ahead yeah Let's open it up. You guys are good for some questions. You've got a couple of hundred players that are, you know, you're inspiring. You guys can take some questions, yeah? You're good for time? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. So, Ian, you can maybe direct these to, or anyone can chime in. Um, have you ever faced setbacks, like not making a team? Um, and if so, what did you do to overcome these setbacks? Um, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, well, I I'll think take that one. Yeah, Hayden. Is that Hayden? Or yeah, so that? yeah, I've I've definitely experienced some setbacks of not being part of a team or not making the roster. And my reaction to that was just to work harder and focus on on the next time um, on it. The only time to get, get better. Right. Does anyone want to add to that, or should I take the next question? Yeah, I could take a bit of that one. I'm saying, like, I've been on the national team before. I started at, at a young age, age 14, about that age. And I faced setbacks with the national team a couple of years ago where when I usually was a starter for the national team, always going to camps, to just not going to camps really – um hurt you know um but those are the chances where you got to prove to everybody and yourself that you know you deserve to be there and you just got to work harder every single day to get back to that point um and you know like i signed a professional contract which means i'm doing something right and you know just don't give up great uh, the next question I'll sort of tie together. Um, when did when did it become a challenge to balance your 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 careers uh, with school, and what how did you manage to do that? Because obviously, you know, you guys were making you were moving. You know, some of you moving away from home, and then also the second part to that the question that came in is how did you deal with moving away from home so young? Some of you moved away from home so young, so. I guess, how did you deal with giving up school, or not giving up school, but modified school, and then how did you deal with being away from home? Yeah, so for me, I've, I've had to move across the globe, basically. And for school, I've been doing online. And I have to I have a busy day, so I have to manage my time very well. And um, I just do, do my best, and that's about it. Um, for me, when I was 14, I joined online school since I would travel a lot. Um, the, Sounders, um, the Sounders director, he, uh, he told me to join the online school because it would be easier for me. 
So everywhere I would travel, I would just bring my laptop and just do school whenever I would be off. And also um, moving away from home, yeah, that was tough. I left when I was 14, so I was still like um, mommy's boy and everything. So, um, so yeah, it, it was tough, you know, um, the first six months. But as you, as you're like there, like friends from the academy will like text you to hang out, go over, and I feel like that helped help me a lot like, throughout the years. Great answers, Ma. There's a ton of questions coming in now. How many hours a day would you guys train when you were 10 or 11 years old? So Roughly. Around that age, I, I'd say every day I was at least doing like one to two hours and sometimes even more. Um, and, but it just varied. Some days it'd be uh, more technical stuff. Some days more tactical, depended on the day. But, um, but yeah. I think everyone could maybe chime in on that one. What do you... Yeah, for sure. I mean, at that, at that age and still at this age, you, you have goals and you want to love the game so much. So as much to be out there and, and train, it was, it was the best for you. Yeah. At, at that age, um, I would watch a lot of videos of like Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar and, and all of that. So I would like I would look up to them and want to be like them. And every day at training, I would just like just do some random skills. And yeah, it was just I was just a kid back then. You know, I didn't know nothing. No Messi, Alfonso. Come on. Yeah, By the way, that that, que that question is coming in. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, wait, Luis. Let's hear from Luis. I want to hear. From Luis, yeah. <laughs> Nah, yeah, at that age, I had, like, everybody has a lot of energy, basically. So just to run your balls out on the field and just work on um, good dribbling, tight spaces in and around cones, like Messi does just around defenders, like nothing. Um, I would be doing that. Um, yeah, and like what Mattel said, like an hour to two hours just doing that. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Yeah, a question that's coming in, quite a common theme. It's a question in everybody's lips is, what are you guys doing right now as professional players during lockdown? What are you doing to stay connected with your team and stay, stay in shape and stay soccer-related? Yeah, I think that's a question for everyone. Yeah. Mateo, that's a good question. Yeah, for me, uh, my team has given me a program to follow, and I've just been doing that every day. So it's a lot of... Uh, ball work it's a lot of um running um lost strength stuff so i'm just trying to do it to the best of my ability and just stay as fit as i can yeah hayden yeah my team uh we've been doing actually a zoom zoom call like this three times a week working out with our strength and conditioning coach and may, just pretty much maintaining our fitness and touching the ball as much as we can and when do you, you guys get to go back on the field here pretty soon, right? At least uh, limited, but still, is that coming up for you guys, Aiden? Yeah, I'll, I'll be going back to training next week. Okay, great. How about you, Alfonso? Uh, they had told us that individual training was supposed to start actually today that MLS have um, released that, but they're, they're still not sure because I guess the governor of Seattle, they're like saying that later on. So, yeah. But you have you actually have a, a fitness a regimen that you're following and yeah and yeah work they, that they've given you yeah same as Hayden they they send us programs and we do exercises like on Zoom like two, three times a week and then so we have trivia nights sometimes um, and then also um, just like Q and A's for like players like getting to know our teammates staff and everything our favorite teammates so yeah it's good. Great, and you were just on a meeting just before this one, right? Yes, the, yes, with, that was, yeah, yeah. Yep. How, how about you, Luis? And you guys back on the? What have you been up to and with this uh, break? How have you been doing? Yeah, um, like Hayden said that. Well, my team also does Zoom calls and we do workouts. Um, we also look at video and what we did against other teams or what we could do potentially against other teams. Um. 
but we also have a fitness plan in which they send us every week. Um, we go on an app called Team Builder. It shows us our other workouts that we could voluntarily do if we want. And I recently also bought a soccer rebounder thing, which you just kick it there and then it'll just come straight back to you. So just got to work on my touch. And I've been running on my own also as well, other than the fitness. So, and we also start individual training tomorrow, in which I'm pretty stoked about that as well. Oh, good. So you get to actually go to the facility or is that? Yeah. MLS released some to go, right? And everyone's yeah. kind of deciding on their own. Great. Okay. I, I guess just this is for anyone, a follow-up question to that. Okay, obviously, you guys are in a position where you have a club that's, that's helping you with a program. You mentioned a little bit running on your own, working on a kickball, a wall. Is there any, for anyone, is there anything you would encourage your young players to do that maybe don't have a structure or a program? What would you encourage them to do when they have all this time in their hands for anyone? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd say just just go out and kick the ball against the wall. Just have fun with it. And, um, yeah, I mean, the more touches, the better. And, and then you're, you can improve, so, yeah. Great. Right. Okay, Ian, maybe a, a couple more. How many more questions do you want, Ian? I want to be respectful. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I think there's probably some great questions out there, so there go ahead. Some, there are some yeah. really good ones. Um, someone, a lot of people asking about, you know, um, your first PDP experiences. Um, how, if you can remember back to when you started PDP, did you ever feel nervous? Because I know there's a lot of people that have maybe done PDP or tried out and probably felt super nervous. Uh, in fact, on the girls one we had last week, a couple of the girls were talking about how they were super nervous at that point and were you nervous and how did you go over that and did that help you for future times when you were maybe trying out for something else? What advice would you give to a, an 11 year old trying out maybe for the first time, for example? I think that's a good one for all of you if you guys don't mind. Mateo, could you start? Okay. Yeah, um, for me, the way I handle nerves is, I mean, I try not to think of it so seriously. I mean, if it's a bad practice or whatever, you just bounce back. Or, um, but no, you, you want to focus and you just want to clear your head and give it 100%. That's all you can do. Did you ever feel nervous going into PDP or, or the ID2? Mm, or at the beginning, remember? when I first started, a little bit. But then the more practices I had, the more comfortable I was. And But yeah, ID2 was a little different. I was a little nervous for that. Yeah. But then, like but then we were... Oh, sorry. Team, yeah. So it was good. I was fine. Yeah, good. Sorry about that, Mateo. Great. <laughs> How about you, Hayden? Yeah, my my first time I was... I'd say I was nervous, but like Mateo said, I just go out and give it my all and, and kind of just trust my instincts when I go out there and play. Great. Alfonso? Yeah, my my first practices were nervous, of course, um, but I got used to it as time went on, as I met also the players there. It was always like different players, but there were some players right there, similar faces from last time. So I would just get to know friends, get to know the teammates. And, yeah, I feel like that helped me a lot, getting to know my teammates from the PDP players to like, handle my nerves and everything. Did you ever feel nervous going into, like, when you were with the Sounders or then you went to the World Cup, obviously? I mean, did you experience some times where you were really nervous? And then how did you overcome it? Or do you? Yes, do you um, the World Cup. On that one? Yes, I'll probably say the World Cup was probably, like, the one that I felt the most nervous in because um, there was, like, a lot of fans and also um, everyone's watching you from everywhere. So, you're, like, you're, like, how to think about that also. And, like, it was just hard, like, it was just hard to, like, like concentrate in the game. But at the same time, like, you have to be used to it at some point. Great. Luis? Yeah, Luis I was, was never nervous. Yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty nervous because I'd be playing against people two years older than me when I first started yeah. PDP. That's right. So everybody played you up a lot. a lot bigger than me, but I was never afraid. You shouldn't be afraid to mess up because everybody messes up. You just gotta bounce back from it. Um, the coaches mainly look at your reaction and what you deal 
or what you do after you lose the ball. Um, that's um, mainly what they look for. Um, but yeah, I just never afraid because I knew um, what my abilities were and I, that I could play with them. And obviously the coaches saw something in me. That's why I got invited. So just believe in yourself is what I say. And I think you've, you've maybe, Louise asked, answered a question that I was going to ask next, but somebody else can chime in about um, the mental part of the game and, and, and how you, we, we spoke about dealing with disappointment, but how much of the game is mental? Um, and is there any advice that you would give to players that pre-match, uh, we asked this question last week as well, and it was interesting that is there certain things that you do to get rid of the nerves or to, to prepare mentally for games? That can go to anyone. Yeah, what I do, um, usually um, I listen to music before games and I like get pumped up and I feel like that's one of the key that gets my nerves away. Okay, does anyone else have any routines that they follow or superstitions to just get in a simple routine now? You just go play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just listen to music, get pumped up and just have a smile on your face because you don't want to be nervous or you could be nervous but just don't be afraid of the opponent so i say yeah, for me you just have to trust yourself trust your instincts and um yeah you, you can't be afraid right an interesting question coming in here when you guys win any pdp you can be honest because it's good to be confident as well like a friend ronaldo when you went into pdp did you guys feel that you were the top player in your group you were the, the, the best player or one of the very top players. How did you feel you were in the group that you were with? For me, I, I felt like I was on the higher end of the group, but I never thought of myself as the best. Even if I was, I always strived to be better. I never, um, I, I didn't really compare myself too much to anyone else because everyone's different, of course. But I just tried to be the best I could be, and I went from there. Hey, Hayden? Yeah, I thought I thought I did well at at uh every time I went. So I believe I I was there for a reason and I was just confident with the way I played and like Mateo said, I go out there and I focus on myself and getting better on on what I can what I can do. Great. So Ian, there's one there's one major question that keeps coming up, and, and we can ask this, and then maybe you you may have a few questions to end it. The question is for everyone, and I think um, Alfonso's maybe sat in the fence, but is it is it Messi or Ronaldo? Because the big question is who's inspired you the most, and, and there are probably more questions on this than anything. So one word: Matteo, Messi or Ronaldo? For me, Messi. Aiden. Messi. I'm not even going to ask you, and you don't get a vote, Alfonso. <laughs> Oh, you get the big vote, Louise. It could be a tie. It could be 3 1, Louise. No, uh, yeah, Messi. 3 1, sorry, <laughs> Alfonso. So, so, Ian, um, there's a lot of good questions. I've tried to tie as many of them together, and we'll be going for over an hour now. Um, is there anything you want to ask before we, we close it out, or maybe any comments from the boys before we round it up? Yeah, I mean, I mean one final one, I think, would just be um you know if you guys could could share any advice you have for these young aspiring players that are listening um because for me you're you're all in a similar position you were in when you were in pdp i mean you're now you're becoming your professionals and you're you you have to maintain a a discipline and a schedule and and you have to take care of yourselves and and you know you have to try to to continue to improve so um, you know, if each of you could maybe give a few words of, of advice for those, you know, young PDP players that are, are listening and hoping to be in your position in a few years. Um, Mateo? Yeah, for me, the most important thing is to enjoy yourself. When you do that, then it makes it 100 times easier to succeed. I also think that you have to be self motivated You have to be driven. You have to... Um, have a willingness to work hard and know that it won't always be easy. And you just have to continue to, to grow as a player every time you're on the field. 
That's about it. Outstanding. Thanks. Hayden, how about you? I got I got two. I I believe to always give your best because you never know who's watching. And then the second one is to thank your parents and be appreciative for all that they do. Love it. All right, great. Alfonso? Uh, I'll probably say um, listen to your coaches, of course. Respect your coaches, um, your school. Um, I'll also say um, um, family also. Keep them close to you, talk to them through everything. Yeah. Great. Luis, how about you? Yeah, I would say do the little things right, even though this may seem like little here and there, but they all add up eventually. And, um, yeah, just work hard, play hard, believe in yourself. And when things get hard, you just got to work harder. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Well, you guys have um, – we're really proud of you, first of all. Um, and, you know, there are some other players, obviously, that have been – in our PDP and they're in similar positions as all of you too. Um, we're planning to do kind of a series of interviews in the future with, with some of the others as well. Um, but again, I just want to thank all of you, um, your humility. It's really impressive. Uh, your ambition that all, you guys are all still ambitious. Um, you know, we, we saw a few qualities in you and PDP that, you know, um, we were hoping would, would help you get to the next level, but you know, ultimately it, it comes down to what each of you do um, and the day to day, of course. And so congratulations on where you're at now and, and want to wish you guys all the best in, in your path, continuing to become a pro. And, um, and we're going to just plan to see you guys at even higher levels in the, in the coming years. So uh, again, congratulations and stay safe guys. And, and, and thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. And then just on behalf of NorCal, thank you, Ian. Obviously, thank you, the boys. Um, it's incredible stuff. Thank you to Paolo. Uh, we have recorded this, so we'll upload it to YouTube and put it out on our social media channels. Um, and if, if, if your teammates, there's over a couple of hundred people on this call, if your teammates couldn't make it, please send them the link because I think there's some fantastic advice from some fine young gentlemen. And um, I, 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 I'm truly inspired just listening. So... Thanks to all the people that joined, all the great questions. Sorry I couldn't get through all of them. Um, I tried my best to patch some of them together, but um, I think we get some great feedback from, from these guys. So, again, on behalf of everyone at NorCal, thanks for joining. Thanks to the boys. Thanks to Ian. Have a good evening and all the very best. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Stay safe. Thank you. Take care. See you, boys. Bye-bye. Yeah.